Our next guest is former BBC TV presenter and current Royal Correspondent, Michael Cole. Welcome to the show, Michael, for the first time. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Royal Family. It's like a soap opera. It's, um, in fact, I think some of the, the characters in soaps are more believable mm -hmm. these days. So it grips the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, you know, the Harry and Meghan thing. It's, mm -hmm. uh, what's going off, mate? <laughs> you know, uh, you're quite right. Uh, I was the BBC Royal Correspondent, the court correspondent, able to park my BBC Rover 216 in the car park, go through the Privy Purse entrance. I went around the world with Her Majesty the Queen, our late Queen, and other members of the royal family. But, Lee, it didn't start for me right there. It started for me on the 16th of February, 1962, when my father put me on the train at St Pancras to go to Mansfield in Nottingham. That's near me. Right next to your yeah. constituency. Yeah. And I started at the age of 18 on the local paper, the Mansfield Chronicle Advertiser. Yes. I went into the office. They said, ah, you're the new boy. Go up to the parish church. Your first job is to collect the names of the mourners at the funeral of a bigwig, a local bigwig. A bigwig. So I did that. And every Monday morning, I had to ring the nine collieries around Mansfield yeah. to find out how much coal each one had cut. Yeah, so yeah. that's how I began so that's as a reporter. That's interesting because you'd have been ringing collieries that I worked at later and you'd have been ringing up stately homes that I've probably visited all of them uh, at some stage in my life. So that, that, that's astounding. But let's go back to the Royals, the, uh, the soap opera that is, it is, we've had the, the Netflix series, the, the Crown, which that's, I think that went viral all over the planet. People are, are nosy. People want to, they actually believe some of this stuff, because I know it's not, a lot of it's fiction in, 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 in the Crown. And I know the Royals watch it as well. Have you watched it? Of course. Uh, and also, Prince Harry has watched every single second of it. He's not a great one with books. I don't think, I'm not quite sure whether he's ever read one. Perhaps he read his own biography. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, <laughs> but he certainly has watched that. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm not down on the crown uh, at all. Uh, the first two series, which portrayed the young Queen Elizabeth yes, II, yeah, yeah. Uh, Claire Foy played her as wise, winning, very beautiful. I mean, at Buckingham Palace, they were purring with satisfaction, hugging themselves with glee, because it presented such a brilliant advertisement for monarchy. The later storylines, problematical, difficulties, scandals, they didn't go down too well. And of course, all the critics came out and gave them a good kicking, including two former prime ministers, yeah, yeah. Major and Blair. And as a result of that pushing and bullying, they now put up a caption at the beginning of each episode saying that it is dramatised fiction. Is dramatized. But the, I mean, the royals brought up and live on, on country estates, but the family having I mean, uh, the same sort of problems as people on council estates. Are they a dysfunctional family? Of course, you can say, is it Coronation Street or is it Coronation? You yeah. know, I mean, uh, which is it? Yeah. Uh, and some of the behaviour... Uh, would uh, have disgraced even EastEnders. I mean, things that have gone on that we know, know about. Yeah. They are resolutely human beings. But, you know, uh, Her Majesty the Queen used to say, I have to be seen to be believed. Uh, and I remember one of her press secretaries, the late Michael Shea, saying to me, 50% of the Queen's job is being seen. Yeah. That is why she wore those bright colours, yeah. those pastel yeah. colours, yeah. not because she particularly liked them, but because she knew she had to stand out in a crowd. And of course, that is very much part of the job. Parliament is sovereign. The sovereign isn't sovereign. The king reigns, but he does not rule. Mm. That's your job. Yeah. You've got the power. But the monarch does exert influence and he has the great privilege that you and I don't have. He has a sit-down conversation every Tuesday evening oh, yeah. with the Prime Minister. Does any of the royals actually vote? No, they're not allowed to, vote. Allowed to vote. No, nor are peers of the realm, yeah. of course. Do you know that? No, no they, 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 they have no vote. But, I mean, if you are the king, you can exert your, your influence. It was said that the Queen didn't really have to disapprove 
All she had to do is raise one eyebrow and say to the Prime Minister, do you think that's entirely wise, Prime Minister? Okay. And they went away to think, is it entirely wise? And that was quite useful in our unwritten constitution yeah. to have somebody who was actually second guessing what the Prime Minister was doing. What's your most memorable moment of the oh. Queen? There must be many. Of course there were, but you know something <laughs> which uh, I really admired her. I really did admire her. Yeah. We, were, we were in Barbados and uh, the Commonwealth wasn't just a nice place to go in wintertime, but she always did jobs and she went and, and it was the opening of a big cement works. Okay. And there was a young man there who was going to tell her how cement was made. And he had his best suit on and his tie. And uh, he stood there with all his graphics and his PowerPoint. And the Queen stood there on her little size four feet and she listened and he went on for uh, 45 minutes uh, telling her how to make cement. Yeah. And uh, I thought, my goodness, you know, eventually he stopped and I thought, oh great, we'll have a drink before lunchtime. And then he turned to her and said the deathless words. And of course, then there is the other way of making cement. And of course, she didn't flinch. She knew that if she expressed any displeasure yeah. or irritation or impatience, he would remember that forever. She had wonderful manners in the sense that she put people like you and me yeah. completely at ease and she found things to say about them and she was she was funny but let's talk about the queen about memorable moments but surely prince philip there's some memorable moments because he could put his foot in it sometimes wouldn't he well you know i i wasn't a huge fan let me just tell you that um i interviewed him when the, in the days when royal interviews yeah. were rare uh, i was invited to interview him uh, uh, it was about business, okay? And he volunteered for this interview about business because he was the patron of the Small Business yeah. Association. And during the interview, I said to him, because it, British industry was in a bad way at the time, wouldn't it be a good idea if one of your sons, instead of, or, as well as going into the services, went and worked for a big British company? Good idea. Yeah, good idea. Anyway, he, he passed it off and said, no, that wouldn't be practical. But when the camera was switched off, when these guys switched off, he said to me, what an absolutely bloody stupid idea. Do you realize that if one of my sons worked for Ford, don't you think that Vauxhall would complain? And he tore a strip off me for asking that question. And I thought it was a perfectly sensible question. And since then, we've seen his sons taking uh, much more interest in business and commerce. And I thought to myself, well, why did he need a sledgehammer to crack a, a very small nut like me? Yeah. So he could be abrasive, he could be rude. He couldn't have really got a job in the diplomatic corps. Well, I think sometimes he liked to go out of the way yeah. to, uh, to rough people up. Uh, people tell me he was very charming and very nice and so on, yeah. but only when he wanted to. I think it's a, tr a true sign of good manners yeah when you're pleasant to the people who are below you. Uh, yes, I agree with that, yeah. Uh, w when you're pleasant to yeah. them. Yeah. And he didn't do that. I mean, other people were saying, well, that's just Philip, that's just Philip. Yeah. But I think that's when, you're, true, when yeah. you're the monarch's yeah. uh, husband, I think you have to be super uh, sensitive. Yeah, well, Michael, thanks. Absolutely brilliant, fascinating chat. Great pleasure. Chat. Look, Great